support of others on the path to waking up. In a famous story, the Buddha's cousin and assistant Ananda came to visit him and remarked, this is half of the holy life, having admirable people as friends, companions, and colleagues. The Buddha disagreed, saying, having admirable people as friends, companions, and colleagues is actually the whole of the holy life. When we come together to talk honestly about ourselves and what happened in our lives, something very powerful can happen. When we see people committing to be who they truly are, with all their effort, dash, affections and their longing to be free, our hearts naturally begin to open. Because their realness allows us to be more real. In their vulnerability, our wise, admirable friends give us the freedom to be vulnerable ourselves and to speak our own truths. So our Sangha becomes the place where we are supported and encouraged to stay on the path, even when it's chow. Dash. Blanging or our progress seems stuck. Our wise friends are, often without words, telling us that if we keep going, so will they. And that can make all the difference in our lives. Reaching out. For many of us in early recovery, asking for help feels almost impossible. But we have found, as difficult as it can be, that it can literally save our lives and that with practice it becomes easier. Asking for help is not just important because it can get results. At times, in fact, it might not. Even with a lot of help and support, things can stand in our way. Sometimes, what we want from the world and from ourselves is just more than what's available. However, even if asking for help may not always get us what we want, it will always help get us through. When we practice accepting help from people, we become a little more open and a little less stuck. It's the decision to reach out, as much as the answer we receive, that can give us what we need to move forward. Nevertheless, that decision is often a heavy lift for us. Many of us have done things during our active addictions that we're not proud of. Some of the decisions we made in the past have far-reaching consequences. Dash. Esta continues to impact our lives even after we begin our recovery. We may have worn a mask of competence, or fearlessness, or blamelessness. And the fear of what might happen when we take the mask off may keep us from reaching out. We may be afraid that if we ask people in our lives for help with financial problems, legal trouble, or other issues, we might lose them. We might worry that they will no longer respect us or accept. As once the mask is gone, because we fear being revealed as broken, fun, dash, damantali flawed people, we may have gotten used to hiding a part of ourselves view the past experiences of rejection. We may even be afraid that there's nothing behind the mask that were simply empty underneath. We practice compassion for all beings, including ourselves, to see the truth beneath those fears, that there is a loving and lovable heart within all of us. We come to see clearly that those around us feel more pain watching us struggle alone than they would if we let them in. And, of course, by shutting people out and refusing to let them see 
Our struggles, you often bring about the isolation and loss that we were trying to avoid in the first place. So, in view of our own suffering and the pain we can cause to those closest to us, we can see that asking for help is not selfish. In fact, it is an act of great compassion to ourselves and others. Those who have shared the pain of addiction and isolation on dash their stand fear and shame better than we might imagine. Through listening at meetings and sharing our own experiences, we begin to see how we're not uniquely broken or flawed. And it's often easier to ask for help from someone other than those people with whom we are closest. In meetings, we often practice openness and acceptance in learning how others may have different experiences of hurt and trauma. In addition to the people, in our Sangha, there may be counselors and other professionals in our community who can be a resource when we need someone with XP. Dash. Ryan's and a greater degree of objectivity. Some clinics and universities even offer counseling on a sliding scale, so we may not have to eliminate that option just for financial reasons. Of course, we know intellectually that our problems become easier to face when we have help, but emotionally we may still feel fear. Again, it's the decision to give it a try that may be more valuable than the outcome itself. We learn that letting people in and being a little more vulnerable are not as frightening as we may have thought. In fact, we may find it less daunting than trying to face our problems alone. When we make a practice of asking for help, we frequently find that it improves both the quantity and quality of our relationships in general. Even if you don't become personally close with people in your sangha outside of meetings, you may find that you are able to connect with more people on a deeper level, and that could be something entirely new in your life. Even if you are seeking help from a spiritual leader, a therapist, or some other professional, notice how opening up to another person affects how much you trust them. God, is there a deepening of respect and feeling of safety as your ability to be transparent grows? This can be dash. Dense and security may also bring benefits to your other relationships. Try to notice these changes as they arise, and give yourself credit for taking steps that are often difficult. It's common to worry that sharing your problems with people will cause them to look down on you, burden them with your baggage or even upset them, and while we must be honest in acknowledging that may be a risk, we also know that remaining isolated can be a much great dash for risk to ourselves and to others. There is great truth in the cliché that burdens are lighter when they're shared. Most of us felt as if an enormous weight had been re dash moved from our shoulders when we made the choice to not be alone with our problems anymore. And as we experience relief, we find that asking for help becomes significantly easier. When we first come into recovery, we may not immediately have easy access to our inner wisdom. Many of us have been relying on the Illusions of fear and shame and reactivity is our guides in life. It takes time to lift those veils, 
to dig through those layers in order to break those habits and begin to see clearly. For many of us, it takes time to be able to trust ourselves, but we can look to our Sangha, our community of wise friends on the path, for guidance and wisdom. When we don't know what to do, when we lose faith that we can make it through this craving, when we're lost in obsession and can't make sense of our own minds and hearts, when the world feels upside down, when we are crawling out of our skin with discomfort, when we have no idea what the next wise step is, this is when we can and must reach out to our Sangha for help. B. Dash. Because those in our Sangha have gone through what we have, they've made it to the other side, and they can show us how to do so as well. Wise friends and mentors. Many, if not most, recovery meetings are focused on med. Dash. Attaining together, reading literature or exploring specific topics, and char. Dash. King, there are no requirements for attendance other than a respectful curiosity, and meetings are a great opportunity for newcomers to learn about the program. Sometimes, those who have decided to commit to this program of recovery want more support on the path. This is where the idea of a wise friend or mentor comes in. The Buddha talked about four kinds of friends. The helpful friend, the kind of friend who sticks with you through good times and bad, the compassionate friend, and the mentor. A wise friend support a true example, kindness, and compassion. It can be anyone in the Sangha who we trust to act as a guide, a supporter, or just a fellow traveler. On the path, this relationship may take many forms, but it is one build. On honesty, compassion, healthy boundaries, and a shared intention to support one another's recovery. For some of us, especially newcomers, it's helpful to work with a mentor, a wise friend who's been in the program for a while who gives support, is there to reach out to when times get rough, and can help hold us accountable. It's not a formal position, nobody is certified, or, so, dash, arrive, to be a mentor, they are just members of the community freely, sharing their journey through the four noble truths and eightfold paths, anyone may choose to collaborate with someone on their path, under, dash, standing that each person must ultimately do the work of recovery, clear, Communication about expectations from both people is important. There are no strict rules, but if you are asked to help someone else in this way, it's a good idea to have someone who's done it before to support you. It's also strongly encouraged that you commit to the five precepts, at least as as far as the supportive relationship is concerned, many people form study or practice groups in addition to act, dash, tending regular meetings, in order to give and receive help from wise friends on their path of recovery. Some call these Kalyana Mitta groups, the Pali term for wise or admirable friends. Some call them, Dharma, Buddies, whatever the name, people gather to explore particular aspects 
of the path in a smaller group, like practicing longer periods of sitting. Meditation, having Sangha retreats, studying Buddhist texts, or listen, dash, ing to recorded Dharma talks. There's no one way to run these kinds of groups, and no special experience is needed to start one. You can expert, dash, image for yourself and also look to the experience of established groups. For ideas, there are also groups that have formed to support individuals in writing inquiries or investigations of how their addictive behavior led to suffering. This is a powerful technique for self-discovery and liberation. And like most aspects of this program, there is no one right way to do it. Some approach it in the same way as inventories in 12-step programs, and some don't. The goal is not to cause shame or to dwell on past trial, dash, moss, but rather to turn toward the pain and confusion we have been running from and learn to meet it with kindness, forgiveness, and calm, dash, passion. You may consider using the questions for inquiry as a starting place for your own exploration. If you need help, know that you're a part of a broader canoe. Dash. Nitty of wise friends. The Sangha of people using Buddhist teachings to support their recovery. It's strongly encouraged for each person to have at least one wise friend or mentor in their group who they can check in with about their recovery especially when we are working with difficult aspects of our past holding safe space will require wisdom and compassion at any time in groups as well as in every aspect of our lives the reminder is that when in doubt we can be present and we can be kind. Service and generosity. In Buddhism, Dana, or generosity, is the first on the list of good qualities that lead a person to enlightenment. We often think of generosity in terms of money, and many groups use the word Dana to describe the donations that members give to help support the meeting. Dana is a Sanskrit and Pali word that connotes the virtue of generosity. In the Buddhist tradition, though, Dana is any act of giving, not just money but also food, time, or our attention, without expecting anything in return. It can also take the form of giving to an individual in distress or need. You may already be familiar with the emphasis that many recovery programs put on service, which is Kansi. Dash. Tent with this ancient teaching. The merit of this practice has been central to many religions and philosophies through the centuries. Generosity with our time, energy, and attention is not only of benefit to others on this path. In Buddhist thought, it has the effect of purifying and transforming the mind of the giver. As we become more generous, it also helps us loosen the grip of greed and attachment that caused so much of our own suffering. From the first time we mindfully put a couple of dollars in the offering bowl or introduce ourselves to a newcomer after a meeting, we can start to feel the benefit of being gen. Dash. Urus without asking for thanks. With our meditation practice, we learn through direct experience how our bodies and our wealth are imperma. Dash meant, and this insight makes us more willing to do good with them while we still
still have them, sharing our experience at a meeting, or even simply meditating along with others and offering our silent encouragement and support is an act of kindness that benefits both ourselves and our Sangha. Many of us have trained ourselves for years to be vigilant about being taken advantage of or ripped off. In some cases, such vigilance has certainly been justified, and there will always be times when we need to establish healthy boundaries, but as our practice deepens, we're able to do so with an attitude of discernment and compassion. In Buddhist teachings, generosity is not a commandment or a you should or an unrealistic standard people are expected to measure themselves by only to find themselves falling short. It is, instead, an illustration of our truth nature of the open and loving hearts that have always been within us but have been covered up for so long that they were almost lost to us. B. Practice helps us to recover this original nature. As we try to cultivate generosity in our meetings and in our lives, we learn to trust our innate kindness and we build confidence that we can give of ourselves and be safe. We continually examine what we perceive to be our limitations and grow in self-esteem, self-respect, and well-being as we see these limitations for what they are. Defensive strats. Dash. Eggies that may once have been necessary, but which have hardened into the handcuffs of habits. The voice of our attachments may say, I don't want to put my hard-earned money in that bowl, or maybe I'll do this act of service, but I'll stop if people don't show enough appreciation. As we practice generosity, we see these fears more clearly and how they have kept us from growing, we begin to realize that this practice is really about creating more space in our hearts and minds. As we expand our capacity for generosity and compassion our heart minds become more expansive and composed. This brings us greater feelings of happiness and self-free. Dash. Spec and gives our practice more strength and flexibility to look at the conditions of our lives and our recovery. We can see the benefits of such a practice when we think about the times when our minds and hearts were closed and protected. We felt on edge, uneasy, and usually didn't like ourselves very much. In that state, we had very few resources to face discomfort or confusion. We were often thrown off balance by even small setbacks, painful or difficult experiences, often overwhelmed us and sent us running for temporary relief through substances and or behaviors. As we become more comfortable with a generous, open heart, we experience greater balance and ease when something unpleasant r s dash s we don't have to worry that it will overpower us we have a refuge we can increasingly rely on in times of trouble and when a pleasant x fairy dash and arises we don't cling to it desperately because we don't actually need it to feel good about ourselves. We practice generosity to be of service to others, to extend heal, dash, ing and happiness to all beings, and to try in some small way to reduce the suffering in this world. As we continue to work with generosity, we 
Learn that the inner practice of recognizing the emptiness of our attach. Dash. Mess and building up resilience is one and the same as the outer practice. Of giving and service. Recovery is possible. In the pages of this book is a path, a set of principles and track. Dash. Tysis that can lead to the end of our suffering and see us through the damage that we piled onto ourselves through our addictions. The path is based on gaining and maintaining mindfulness of our feelings, bodies, minds, and experiences. During our journey, we come to accept that we're responsible for our own actions and that every choice has a con. Dash. Sequence. If we act unskillfully or mindlessly, we will experience pain in our feelings, thoughts, and experiences. Karma. And we may cause harm to others. We begin to recognize that every thought, feeling, and experience is only temporary impermanence that it will pass if we allow it to and trusting this can provide a safe harbor in moments of craving or pain we start to believe that even the most difficult traumatic and painful actions and events of our past don't define who we are today nor do they define the possibilities in our future it is our choices and actions now that define us. At the same time, we can start to notice and reflect on experience. Without getting attached to it or to the stories we tell ourselves about it. Selflessness. We come to accept that we can never satisfy all of our death. Dash. Sires and cravings. We see this in our struggles with impermanence, with sickness and aging, not getting what we want or losing what we have, not feeling loved by those we desire or feeling rejected by those who caring we want the most. We sometimes have to deal with people and situations that are painful or uncomfortable, unsatisfactoriness. But with clear understanding, we can begin to choose more AP. Dash. Appropriate actions and responses to our experience, and it is in this choice that we find freedom and relief from suffering. When we act with full awareness of each choice, of even the smallest action, we can begin to notice the motivations behind everything we do we can begin to ask is this action useful or not is it skillful or unskillful whenever we're confused or feel lost we have meditation tools that we can use to simply return to the present moment to our experience of the present as it is for us right now and we can check in with our Sangha, our wise friends, for added perspective and compassionate support. So, what do we gain by practicing understanding, ethical cons, dash, duck, and mindfulness? We're asked to sit with discomfort, to experience it without fear or resistance, and to know that it's impermanent. We learn that Luka is part of the human condition, and efforts to avoid or deny it lead to more unhappiness and suffering. We've learned that we can never dash or satisfy our desires through sense experiences, through chasing pleasure, and trying to hold on to it. Every pleasant sense experience will end in the more we try to hold on to it and turn desire into need or craving, the more we suffer dukkha, we're mindful that dissatisfaction and unhappy 
dash NASA beginnings by tracing the dissatisfaction or unhappiness back to its roots.